So anyone just joining, my name is Emi Yoon and I like to make my own car parts. Um, in particular, it is my project car and my daily driver, a 2004 Acura RSX Type S. And so if you missed out, be sure to check out the past episodes. Today we get on to making something, finally. And we're going to start off by making the front lip for the front bumper. And so, without anything else, let's go. I'm Emi Yoon and this is Isabel version 5, Unicorn. So I ended up drawing in the final lines for the front lip so we could build the template. The materials we're going to be using for this template is polystyrene. We got two thicknesses of it, which is 3mm and 6mm. The 6mm we're going to be using for more rigid and stable pieces. And the 3mm we'll be using for maybe like curves and anything that's a little more rounded. So we're going to start off by drawing the base with the 6mm polystyrene. For now we're only going to do half. We're going to cut that out and then we're going to apply it to the car. Then we're going to be using the 6mm polystyrene for the sides. We're going to draw and cut as we go so we can get the curves that we want. And then eventually, we're going to cut the final piece and cut and apply to the car. The template is quarter built. We're going to go on to using the current pieces that we made to mirror and trace so we can make the opposite end. For the base, we're actually going to use that half piece and we're going to combine it so we can make one full piece. This is basically like a stencil that we can use. So once we have that all on the car, we're going to use the 3 mil polystyrene and then we're going to cut those into strips so we can use it as a filler and then we're going to connect piece by piece, basically cut out each piece and we're going to create a half stencil for the front. We'll take that half stencil, we're going to make it into two pieces. And now that we have both pieces, we're going to apply it to the current stage of the car. And tape it together for a full template. So once the template is put together, we're going to get onto the carbon fiber. So I got my carbon fiber. I have a 2x2 two two twill weave and also a checkerboard style plain weave. Please do note that this isn't like an aero grade or a race grade carbon fiber. It is a cheaper version of it in which the company calls it second quality. And when it comes to uh, using carbon fiber, my personal preference is tool weave because I think it's a little more easier to work with when, especially when you're doing complex like curves and structures as to the plain weave being more 
uh, usable for rigid parts. I don't know, that's my opinion, but at least for this order of carbon fiber, the plain weave that I got was a lot thicker than expected. So for this project, I'm gonna just be using a generic home improvement store uh, resin. Since we're not building like a legit race car, I don't feel the need to use high grade resin nor high grade carbon fiber. So to get onto the carbon fiber work, uh, some tools, I guess, if you wanna say, uh, that we can use for this are some disposable brushes that we can use for applying the resin. Disposable cups and fork forks for mixing the resin. And make sure to use some disposable gloves for your skin safety. And then I have my measuring cup to make sure that I have the right uh, hardener to resin ratio. So I had some leftover carbon fiber scraps that I'm going to begin cutting into some generously sized pieces. And then we're going to cut the rest of the carbon fiber. So I'm going to begin by mixing the resin first. Then I'm going to apply the resin to the template first and then start laying down the carbon fiber, then apply more resin, carbon fiber, resin, carbon fiber. So my technique with carbon fiber is to overlay, or I guess if you want to call it draping technique, because uh, I currently don't have like the tools or equipment to make a female mold and lay inlay carbon fiber into it and then do the whole vacuum bagging and the whole auto cloth process. But when you're doing the draping process, it helps to use a lot bigger pieces, which was my mistake at first. And sorry, it's been a while since I've done this. And we're gonna to continue to apply carbon fiber and resin until we get about four, maybe five plies for the time being. And then we're gonna flip it so we can get the bottom part as well. And please do note that this is just an amateur process. I'm still an amateur at this. So this isn't the most effective way to do this. So the problem with using this technique, this draping or patching technique, especially if you're using smaller pieces, it's go you're gonna end up getting uneven layers. But at the same time, if you're using fuller pieces or bigger pieces, it can leave excess that may become unusable and wasted because you might end up getting maybe some resin on it, it might harden and whatnot. And this process can also get really messy. Um, when you're applying the carbon fiber and resin, the edges of the carbon fiber fabric can start threading. So you're going to get strands of carbon fiber pulling out and it's going to end up hardening on your surface. So if you can, just try using fuller or maybe just a little bit larger pieces. So I ended up sanding the lip once it dried or cured. And once sanded, you can kind of see the uneven layers and surfaces. You can see the dips. And this basically comes from the patching or uh, draping application when you get the uneven layers. So we'll probably end up going back in later and filling that in. One important note when it comes to sanding or cutting carbon fiber is to make sure you use protective gear. Safety glasses, uh, goggles are probably better, and a mask or a respirator because the dust is very sharp and it can get very irritating. You don't want that in your eyes or your lungs. And also make sure uh, wear long sleeves or cover all skin because it can help prevent skin irritation. And trust me, it sucks. So removing the lid from the actual bumper, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to take off the template that's underneath here. So I'm not really trying to remove the carbon fiber off of the template, I'm moving the template and the carbon fiber off of the bumper. And to do that, you're going to need something flat. So I'm going to use my butter knife. Uh, just a spatula for when you're doing 
any kind of drywall or Bondo, Bondo, or whatever it is. Pallet knife, whatever people like to call it. So, I'll leave this again. And you don't want to use a lot of force because I don't know if this is fully cured yet, so it might still be prone to warping. And if you can, get this tape underneath, so you're going to want to get that tape cut. Removed, and so once the bottom is removed, we're going to remove the top side as well. And another note is to use gloves when you're handling uh, cured or dried carbon fiber, especially because the edges can be very sharp. You do not want to cut yourself with it or get poked with it. So once the lip is off the bumper, we're going to cut the edges and excess off. And we're going to use the template as guidelines to do so. So my preferred choice of cutlery is a cut off disc. And this is because uh, the carbon fiber is so rigid and it's a very strong material in a sense, I guess. So most blades or saws that I've used, they tend to wear out really, really fast. So when all the edges and excess is cut off, we're going to use 120 grit sandpaper to soften and smooth out the edges. And then once completed, we're going to put the lip back onto the front bumper and screw it into place. Finally, the lip is on. The contact points are pretty good, except for the middle part, uh, which kind of sags, but we'll figure that out a little bit later. So this is what it looks aired out. It's pretty low. And overall, I'm gonna say I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll leave it the way it is for now. For now. With the front lip half complete, uh, we're gonna leave it the way it is for now and hold off on finishing it, we'll move on onto the next part, which will be the side skirts. So be sure to subscribe for more to come and follow me on IG at emi.yoon for updates and to view my past builds and feel free to hit me up if you have any comments, questions or concerns. And I think that's all for now. So I'll catch you guys next time.